For every major gaming franchise, there is the one game that's looked at as the low point, the rock bottom, the pit of horses beaten by our corporate overlords who just want that last drop of milk from the husk that was once the great cash cow of the industry. Hey everyone, Kane from Vivichim here, and today we're looking at that game for the Resident Evil franchise in the form of Resident Evil 6. The game that the majority of the RE fandom agrees being the worst, honestly. But is it? Hit that like button, press subscribe if you're feeling extra lovely, and sit back as I ask Resident Evil 6, how bad can it be? There are four stories going on simultaneously in Resident Evil 6, but I only played three of them because my god is this game long or what? A little insider knowledge here, I used to record everything that I did in these video games when making reviews as a way of making sure that I had all the footage needed without a doubt. This game changed that when I realised my footage folder was 232 gigabytes of video. That's more than two Red Dead Redemption 2 installs, more than Modern Warfare on PC, more than Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020, or exactly 100. 4,272 copies of the original Doom, and I didn't even play the entire game! You could give the entire estimated population of Monaco two copies of Doom each, and you would still have some spare. That is how much the 16 hours of gameplay I experienced of Resident Evil 6 takes up on my hard drive. Anyway, back on track. The campaigns follow Leon S. Kennedy with partner Helena, Chris Redfield with partner Piers, Ada Wong, and Jake Muller, son of Albert Wesker, and his partner, a returning Sherry Birkin in the most uncomfortable return I've ever seen, given the last time I saw her she was an actual child in RE2, and no, I could not show why in this video. It's nothing too explicit, but it's your typical look at the undressing girl panning shots, which by themselves are a little creepy, but when you remember that the subject was a 12 year old the last time you saw them, it gets really disturbing. Leon's campaign had a slight horror vibe on occasion, and some glimpses of the more traditional RE experience, but it's honestly the weakest weakest of all the campaigns that I played, the only reason to care about it are the brief callback to RE4 via the president, and Leon still being led on by Ada after so many years. The rest of it is pretty bland, with the addition of Helena being, well, kind of pointless. I'm six games into this franchise, more if you count the spin-offs, I don't need another character with a massive backstory. Why not do Claire for the inevitable Chris crossover, or why not even Ashley from RE4? Chris's campaign, meanwhile, has the most interesting story as it really humanizes the soldier and takes him on a journey. He comes across as a real victim of all the crazy RE shenanigans and is tortured by his experiences. The only problem, once again, is why introduce another character in the form of Piers? Now that's not to say Piers is bad by any means, and it's easier to grasp his involvement than Helena's, but why use someone like Piers when you literally have a character like Barry who is friends with Chris just sitting out there still alive? Not to mention that Barry also has a history with Wesker, which could really make the Jake interactions interesting. Piers, meanwhile, is just a dude. Jake, on the other hand, has a pretty normal story for Resident Evil. It's about the C-Virus infecting Adonia, while Sherry Birkin comes to collect him, as he supposedly carries antibodies for it. Whilst all this is going on, they are being tracked down by a hulking B.O.W. that wants to kill them. It's pretty standard stuff, honestly. Jake is also the only new character to work fully, as we already know all the backstory we need for his dad being Wesker. He slots right in because of those ties, and it doesn't feel forced in there to pad out the narrative like it does with Piers and Helena. This campaign is also the best one by far in terms of how fun it is. The plot is pretty bog standard, but the pacing is so much better than the other two. That leaves Ada Wong, of course, which is the one campaign which I didn't play, and the simple answer as to why is that, well, I didn't want to. These campaigns are all a chore to get through, and while they have some upside and some parts are better than others, the overarching plot is bland with nothing to hook you in aside from the crossover events, which are also extremely boring. I was ready to call it quits after Leon, and I had to force my way through Jake and Chris's campaigns just so I had enough content to make this review. It sucked. Resident Evil 6 might be one of the weirdest games I've ever discussed when it comes to how it looks because it has some of the most interesting environments in this entire series, but everything looks terrible. It's mostly in Jake's campaign, but the general variety felt with each location is the best that RE has ever done, including in the newer games. 
The crossover segments repeat the same locations, and even then, they still feel slightly different and unique from the last time. It's just all the textures are awful, and the models aren't incredible either. It's like that scene in Sam Raimi's Spider-Man movie with the glasses, except when the glasses are blurry, you see a very pretty looking level, but when you take them off, you see a mess of textures so pixelated, it looks like this video would if I decided to show that Sherry scene I mentioned earlier. Now it is from 2012, so it's not going to be 4K quality, but my god this game looks terrible if you stare at anything for more than 3 seconds at a time. So this is the part that I would usually go on about how I feel about the audio, and if you've watched any of my videos you'd know that there's a high probability of me liking the audio, but I've suddenly come to a realisation whilst writing this script. I can't remember what this game sounds like like at all. I've since gone back to listen to the OST and yeah, this soundtrack is pretty much completely forgettable and that goes across all three of the stories that I played. I'm actually just kind of stunned that's never happened before. Resident Evil as a franchise has always had somewhat of an identity crisis, with the series of games slowly drifting towards the gravitational pull of being an action game instead of a horror experience. Now, there isn't anything innately wrong about this, and it's okay for a series to adapt and change in order to survive, but as we've seen with many a series before it, changes must be done well in order to survive. Otherwise, you aren't interesting new players or old hardcore fans, and that scenario best sums up Resident Evil 6. This game is the reason that so many fans shudder when the term action orientated or focused on action is mentioned in regards to the Resident Evil series. This game threw us into the action deep end, and carelessly so. You feel drowned by Resident Evil 6. It's not like RE3 for example, which is a super action focused game, but does so in a really entertaining way that maintains that balance through things like atmosphere and tension. Resident Evil 6 just sucks. The game isn't fun in any way, with a variety of repetitive and dull set pieces or eliminate all enemies objectives, with the occasional boring boss fight thrown in between them for good measure. It's not paced either, it's all just strung together incoherently. The combat is awkward with spongy enemies throughout the game, and combine that with dull gunplay and inconsistent melee combat, an atrocious inventory system, and a focus on co-op, well, you're in for a mediocre time all around. Oh, and I actually played this one as a co-op experience, unlike the last game, and as I theorised in the RE5 video, which you can check out by pressing the I in the corner, it pretty much amplified all of the problems that I already had with the game. I was paired up with a laggy partner who was more interested in doing his own thing than really playing the game. And yes, I'm shocked that people still play Resident Evil 6 in 2020 as well. One of the major issues that RE6 throws at a PC player is its control options, as both of them are a miserable experience, but for different reasons. Playing the game with a keyboard and mouse is an absolute mess, with an egregious use of QTEs, all of which having awkward key inputs, making for a really stilted experience. So you'd think that playing with a controller would be the solution, and while it is a much better option from a control sense, my frame rate would tank drastically and frequently, with the game often freezing entirely for seconds at a time. So my options for RE6 were as follows, deal with the keyboard and mouse, an experience so miserable I'd rather defuse an active bomb, or play with a controller, which was akin to me sticking my hand in a blender very choppy and causing me extreme pain. I wish I had more to say honestly, but this game is just so bland that I don't really know what I should tell you about it. It was a chore to play Resident Evil 6, with Leon and Chris's campaigns just being so infuriating from start to finish. Every five minutes you came across something bullshit that would kill you, be it a ridiculous QTE or an overwhelming amount of walking sponges with guns. Jake meanwhile, despite being the one reason I had people warning me about this game being terrible, was legit the best part of this entire experience because it was so entertaining to punch these dudes and play the action segments. You literally have two extended sequences where you're on a vehicle and they're both fantastic. The scene where you go down a hill on a snowmobile and the initial D-style bike chase. I loved how dumb this game is. If the game was all Jake's campaign and about 10 hours shorter, I'd absolutely adore it. Resident Evil 6 was a chore to play, and it definitely deserves the frequent criticism that it gets, but it was not the worst experience I've had in a Resident Evil game, probably the longest though. The game had potential, but honestly it's because of the lack of good choices in its story development that really make this game sick. It 
couldn't make up for the lackluster gameplay that was already there, which some of the other games can do, and really what we're left with is just a mediocre experience, aside from Jake's story, which is great because it embraces the dumb, it knows what it is, and it has the most identity out of absolutely anything in Resident Evil 6. Thanks for watching this review. What are your opinions on Resident Evil 6? Please leave them down below. I would love to hear them. Subscribe today for all future Vivid Shim content. Make sure you hit that bell. See you there bright and early, and I'll see you all soon.